We're going to do two things to prepare to solve this problem. And the first one is we're just going to sketch out physically what happens. Okay, so there's a nucleus of plutonium 240. And just to be definite about this, we'll note that plutonium is atomic number 94. And so the number of protons in the nucleus is 94. The number of neutrons is just the difference between the number of nucleons and the number of protons, and so that's 146. Okay, so we know that. And then typically, if I want a nucleus to fission, I hit it with a neutron. So a neutron comes in and hits this, and it produces a couple of fission fragments, and then it might also produce a couple of extra neutrons. We're not sure. So one fission fragment comes off of this, perhaps some neutrons, but one thing we're sure of is that it produces the fission product of xenon-1. 33. Now to be definite about this one, we know that xenon is atomic number 54, so the number of protons in this particular nucleus is 54. The number of neutrons is just the difference between these two, so the number of neutrons is 79. Okay? Okay, so plutonium splits into a couple of pieces, and this is one piece that it splits into. And the problem asked us to calculate the binding energy per nucleon for the original plutonium-240 and then for the xenon-133. Well, before we complete that calculation, let's do an assessment. So let's think ahead to the very end of the problem. How can we assess a result and see if it makes sense? Well, we know we're told that this fission product is more tightly bound. We're told that in the problem statement. So we expect this one to have a higher binding energy per nucleon than the original nucleus. And so we can use that to check. Okay, the binding energy of xenon better be more than the binding energy of the plutonium. We expect that to be true. Now another thing we're going to need to do in order to solve this problem is calculate some num or collect some numbers. And first off, we'll do this. The mass of the plutonium atom, we can look that up in the appendix in the textbook, the mass of the plutonium is 240.053808. The mass of the xenon nucleus is 132.905906. Okay? We're also going to need to know the mass of a hydrogen atom. Okay, and the mass of the hydrogen atom is 1.007825. We also need to know the mass of a neutron. The mass of a neutron is 1.008665. And all of these masses are in atomic mass units, okay, and units of U. So here's our preparation, and now we're ready to do some solving. Well, the binding energy of the plutonium nucleus is this. It's just the difference between the mass. Well, first off, we're going to calculate a binding energy by computing a mass difference and then multiplying it by c squared. That's what we're going to do for to compute the binding energy. So first off, we have to compute the mass difference. And when I take a plutonium atom and I, and I build it out of subentities, some mass is lost, and the mass that's lost turns into energy. That's the binding energy that we're talking about. Now, to build a plutonium-240, it's going to take me, and we said here, there's 94 protons, so it's going to take me 94 hydrogen atoms. So I, want, I start with 94 times the mass of the hydrogen atom, plus it's going to take me 146 neutrons, so 146 times the mass of the neutron, and I'm going to subtract from that just the mass of the plutonium, okay? So I, if I built a plutonium atom, these are the basic constituents that I build it out of. This is how much mass of the materials that go into the plutonium, and then I subtract off the mass of the plutonium, I get this mass difference. And it turns out if we use the numbers that we have over here, we calculate a mass difference. We get a mass difference of 1.94. 6832 atomic mass units. That's the amount of mass that's lost when I build a plutonium atom from these subentities. Uh, 94 hydrogen atoms, so 94 protons, 94 electrons, and 146 neutrons. So this is basically the mass defect. 
Now then, I can compute the binding energy that corresponds to this. And the way I'll do it is this. I'll just note that a mass difference of one atomic mass unit corresponds to an energy of 931.49 MeV. Okay, there's a correspondence between those. So we can take the binding energy. We have the difference in atomic mass units. One atomic mass unit difference corresponds to this difference in energy. So we can compute the binding energy, and it's 1,813.45 mega electron volts. But we weren't asked to find a binding energy. We were asked to find the binding energy per nucleon, and it's plutonium-240. So the binding energy per nucleon is equal to this number divided by 240. And if I work that out, I get 7.56 mega electron volts. Now we've been keeping lots of extra significant figures around because we're taking differences between numbers that are very close to each other, but we're at a point where we can round off comfortably. Now let's do the same thing for the xenon. Okay, so for the xenon, here's what we get. The mass difference is just equal to the mass of the products, which is 54 protons and electrons. So I take 54 times the mass of the hydrogen atom plus 79 neutrons. So 79 times the mass of the neutron minus the mass of the xenon 133. And if I work that difference out, okay, we have all the numbers we need to calculate it. What we get is 1.201179 atomic mass units. Now we can convert that into an energy because there's one atomic mass unit corresponds to 931.49 mega electron volts. And so we can figure out the binding energy is 1,118.89 mega electron volts. But again, what we're asked to compute is not the binding energy, but the binding energy per nucleon. And the binding energy per nucleon is just equal to this number divided by the number of nucleons, which is 133. And so what we get is 8.41 mega electron volts. Now let's check our results and see if that makes sense. We said we expected the binding energy for xenon to be greater than the binding energy for plutonium. And in fact, we find that that's true. Here's the binding energy for xenon. Here's the binding energy for plutonium. And this one is bigger. And so when plutonium splits into two fission fragments, this one is more tightly bound. And so energy is released in this process. The other thing we can say is this. There's a graph of numbers in the textbook that gives us the binding energy per nucleon as a function of the atomic number. And we get this curve that rises quickly, kind of like peaks and then falls. And we can look on the graph and see about what we would expect for something in the range of plutonium and for xenon. And those numbers check as well. So we've got two natural checks on our work. And our results match our expectations. And so we know that their answers of our calculation represent the way the world works, which gives us confidence in our result.